Hello, my name is Josean, I'm a reverse engineer and in this video I'm going to tell you how to do some basic uh, reverse engineering task. We are going to reverse engineer a very easy malware sample. It was called Fly Studio back in the day by some AB companies. The, the malware sample is actually dead already. Even if we make some mistakes, we can just run it and it won't do anything bad because it requires also a DLL that I'm not supplying and that I don't even know where it is at this point in time. So what we are going to do is to analyze this malware to determine everything about it. It's a rather easy piece of malware that I usually use in my trainings, in my malware trainings, to teach people how to do malware reverse engineering. If you are thinking that I'm going to run it in some sandbox or something like that, forget about that because we are going to do it the way I like it. And the way I like it is by opening it in Ida and taking a look to everything it does. So, let me open it. And here we are. As we can see here in the entry point, uh, we basically have nothing. We don't have any function, we don't have any control flow graph. This is because uh, the mal this malware sample is obfuscated and is using some tricks known as opaque predicates. So Ida turns mad and cannot uh, disassemble uh, properly uh, the malware sample. So how it works? There is a jumpy fellow here in this line that is jumping to some level plus three. It means that it is jumping to this instruction plus three bytes. This is usually done to prevent static analyzers from uh, sewing or displaying proper uh, disassembly. This is very common and well, it is based on a simple trick, but for the programmer, it is known that the jumpy fellow is going to be taken, but Ida cannot determine if we are going to take the jump or if the jump is not going to be satisfied and then we are going to execute the next instruction. Ida tries to disassemble both instructions, both the one for the true path and the one for the false path and naturally f uh, fails at this point because uh, they interfere one with the other. So what can we do? We can undo this and uh, fix what Ida doesn't understand. What I'm going to do is, we are going to go to this location and undefine it, pressing the key U. Here we are. And then we are going to get back to the address where the jump is going to be taken and press the uh, key C. Okay, and now we have some more uh, interesting code. Okay, let's continue. If we continue the flow by taking the next jump, this one, which is an uh, unconditional one, we can see here that we have a call to some function, but it is using actually the same trick. Instead of jumping to some specific location, it is jumping to some specific location plus one. What are we going to do? The same as we have done before. Undefine and then create. Z. Actually, I believe that the instruction right after the call is waste, is garbage, it's nothing that we really need for anything. So I'm going to undefine it by pressing U again. And now we are going to create our first function. So we have the entry point, the next instruction, it takes the jump, then it takes another jump, and then it calls. Well, before doing anything else, we are going to create a function here. So I'm selecting the instructions that I want to be part of the function and then I'm going to press the key P, procedure. And okay, here we are. We have our first function. It doesn't really do anything, but well, let's continue. I'm going to undefine that. Oh, sorry, just that. And let's go here. Okay, and now here, and whatever it is calling, we have some function, and I'm going to start creating it. If we just press P here, we will see that Ida complains, and it says, your request has been put in the autoanalysis queue, blah, blah. The function has on the finest instruction data at the specified address. So, 
When this happens, what we can do is select the first instructions until the first jump and then press P. Ida will try to add as many Fantion tails or Fantion tanks, as it is being called here, by following the jumps until it cannot do more. So instead of failing, like it was failing before at this address for whatever reason, it will try to do its best. If we take a look to the graph now by pressing space, we can see that we have some instructions, some basic blocks. Not really, but well, we, we start having something more than before. Actually, we started with not even a single control program, and now we have kinds of two functions. So, as we can see here, we have, say, again, the same trick. So, an opaque predicate, jumping into the middle of one instruction. So, again, this is, reverse engineering is usually very mechanical. Once you know what you have to do, you have to do it a lot of times, and it doesn't change that much. So, as I was saying, let's do it again, undefined, then create it again, and I'm going to undefine these bytes too, because we are not interested on them. Let's see the graph again by pressing a space, and well, it is looking a bit better, and then it jumps to the beginning of the file. Well, we will take a look later. More. So, well, I know it because I already analyzed it, but it seems that in this malware or this packer only use opaque predicates with jump if bellow or jump if not bellow instructions. Why? I do not know, but this is what they do. So, uh, in this jump, in jump if it's zero, we are doing uh, actually trying to ignore the next instructions because we thought, maybe, that it was using the same tricks or that call be using that trick, but it's not in this case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add at least the next two instructions. Why not uh, everything else? Because as far as we can see, most of the time in this malware, uh, we have seen either jump if bellow or jump if not bellow instructions being used among with opaque predicates to confuse either. So we are not sure if at this point it is going to take the other uh, one of this part. So just in case, we are only selecting the two instructions that we are sure 100% time that they are going to be executed. So this time we are not going to press P to create a function, but rather we are going to open a new function tank, or as it is called here in the GUI, yep, a function tail. So we select the instructions that we want, then edit, sorry, functions, up and function tail. We select the function that we want, which is that one, and here we are. If we press now space, we can see that, hey, now the graph look, looks much, much, much better. So now we have one, two, three loops, which are most likely the loops used to decrypt the malware sample, and when all the loops finishes, it goes to somewhere. This somewhere is most likely the original entry point, which, by the way, is what I'm going to do right now. Call or rename or make a name, as in the as it it is called by either this location 41,000 as the original entry point. Okay. Let's take a look again to the graph, and also we are going to use now the pseudocode, the decompiler. Yep. So, well, we can do some stuff, or we can see some stuff here, but the output doesn't look like very good. First of all, when we find out that we have instructions that they say jump out, it means that it is jumping to somewhere else, and either haven't done anything about it we need to fix this. It usually means that uh, this part was obfuscated or that there was something wrong that I couldn't handle or deal with, and we, the reverse engineers, have to fix it. Okay, so let's take a look. Chip. Sorry. And it seems that it is here. Okay, 
Do you see jump if not below the usual pattern that or the usual instruction that is being used all the time in this macro sample? And then an opaque predicate allocation plus one. It means that something here is wrong and we need to fix it, blah 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 blah, like we have done before. So after the jump I'm going to undefine two and now it is doing it right. And now if we press again either tab or f five we will see that it is looking much, much, much better. It is now doing whatever. We have two loops here, and then they increment pointers and subtract something with this key. This key actually is the decryption key. And what? Well, basically, that's it. We are later going to use that decryption key because this algorithm is rather easy and we can unpack this malware sample without even having to run it using a technique called X-Race, which we are going to use later on uh, by simply using this key, as I said. But now we need to fix, before doing that, at least one more thing. We have another jump out. As I said, usually jump out is something that either code and handle, code and deal with, and we need to fix. Let's take a look to see what is this. Here and here. Well, it's here. So it is trying to jump to this address. After the jump is taken to 40, 1000, it is trying to do a jump far pointer. If you see a jump far pointer, it is most likely just crap, garbage, things that were not um, unpacked yet. So I'm going to undefine it. Just press the key U and that's it. Now, if we take a look here, we will see that it is looking now much, much better. We have uh, two loops that they are doing decryption of the body of the malware sample. Then it is calling some address that we are not going to even analyze right now because it's pointless, trust me. If you want, you can do it at home or wherever you are and then ask me, but you are, there is nothing very interesting there. And after all of this stuff, it simply jumps to the previously uh, original entry point. Jump to the OEP, which is usually called. And here we are. The last thing that we shall do here is put some name to this function by going to the function name and then pressing the key N to put a name, I'll say the crypt body. And once we have it, the crypt body, the... now we can go to the next step. So this is the decryption key. And now what we are going to do is we are going to decrypt the sample. Uh, we have already analyzed the packet. We have seen how it uh, decrypts everything. We even have code that we call copy-paste from the malware sample to our own tools to write, um, I don't know, a decryptor or something like that. But there are even easier ways instead of copying everything. And we are going to do it in IDA, so we have a NIDA database that we can properly analyze. So as I said, it is using a very easy method to decrypt which is, it is just subtracting this key from the bytes. So it is iterating from the beginning of the original entry point, 41,000, to the end of this segment, 42,000. So we are going to do actually the same as the malware does, but we are going to do it in IDA Python. So file, script commands, Python, I prefer two spaces, and okay, so the main address, oh sorry, so the main address or EA as they are usually called in IDA is 41,000 and now the start address is going to be, let me take a look because I always forget that. So we know that the original entry point is at this address 
and then the start address, the start address for that segment, the segment where that instruction belongs, is that idc dot get segment start, and then we also have the opposite idc dot get segment end oep. And now what we have to do is iterate d words by d words and pad the bytes. It's rather easy for address in range start ta and ca we want an increment of four bytes and then we continue here i never remember these functions and i always have to take a look to them so give me a second and okay so the function that we want to use right now is first uh, the one to get a d word from the bytes so what we are going to do is w val equal to get white d words and here we are going to put the current address and now what we are going to do we want to apply the key the key is the one that we have seen here which is the decryption key that has been used that one here that's it We want to be sure, because we are using Python and not C or C++, that we are doing it properly. So we are passing a proper double word and it's not a number that is bigger than a double word. And was we mask it and we have the proper decrypted double word, we just want to apply it. So the in oh, the function is bad, double words, and now is the address, and with what are we patching it? W D W Val. And well, basically that's it. Here, if we press C to create code, we will see that there is nothing. It is pointless. It's garbage code. But let me save first. If we run it now we will see something very different. It is an E8, which means it's some sort of code. And here is it. If we press Z, I'm going to do it again, Z, it will create codes and actually find some functions and many things. I'm going to press P and start analyzing it. So, well, it calls some function and then it pushes the return value and exits from the processes. Well, so the logic of this malware is here. Malware logic. Let's go there. This is the function that is going to do all the malware thing. If we take a look in a graph by pressing the space, we will see that it is a rather easy, easy, small malware sample that uh, well, this function is trivial to reverse engineer. We are going to do first by taking a look uh, in assembler and then by taking a look in the pseudocodes. So let's start. It does something here and it called some function that I'm not going to analyze right now. Then we have this kernel.fnr and it calls the function lister cat, so it is concatenating some string and then it loads the libraries so it is trying to load this library yep what i have done is let me undone it yep is i just right click it here in the title and then choose a uh, group node. Then you can put a, a comment here and instead of watching the, the disassembler, the disassembly, you can simply see whatever you want to put there. Okay, so in this part of the code we need, so we know, sorry, that uh, it is just doing a load library. It is actually loading the library with the actual logic of the malware sample. And, well, and here we have reg open key, some sort of key so it is trying to read what i it is trying to read some register key so if we press m here 
where we have that constant that we have no idea what is that, or well, at least me, I don't know what it means. And we say yes here. Ida will try to search for some constants that uh, that have this actual value. If we search for some h key, we will see that there is one h key current user. And uh, here we are. So basically, it is doing right open key in h key current user software fly sky e install. Okay. So let me do as I did as I have done before. Group nodes reg open k hk current user whatever key it is and here we are next then it takes the result of that and checks the value path from this k and then it closes the register key so basically It is doing that and after that it is calculating the string uh, the string size and then it is checking if there is a, a slash well a directory separator if there is not it is adding and after doing that it does all the stuff so I'm going to take these two basic blocks and do group nodes for the two basic blocks as, uh, as I said check if the path string ends with the backslash character and if not just as it okay and then it continues here and it takes that path and concatenates with kernel.fne and calls load library A. So, okay. Right click, group nodes, load library, path register key. Basically, remember that you are not going to write here proper code, that you are writing notes for you. So write the notes in the basic blocks as you want. Whatever you write here is only for you. So loop library, register case path, and plus that thing, that string, which is another library that it is finding. Press OK. Here we are. And now we get here. In EAX, we have uh, the pointer to the already load library, which is called here hlib module, and then it calls get proc address from that library get new sock. So what is it doing? It is resolving the library function get new sock from kernel dot fne. So right click, group node. And resolve the API function. How is it called? Kernel dot fna get new sock. Okay. And then, well, it called. Oh, sorry. And then at this point, it calls get new sock, passing the value three e eight. What is three e eight? I have no idea. And really with the current piece of malware there is nothing else we can do we can try to guess what it is passing by pressing m and taking a look at the constants but really it can be anything so there is nothing else that we can get there is no more information that we can get about what is this malware doing at least here uh, ba -ba -ba. after that it simply calls a free library with the library that was called before, that was loaded before. Free library, kernel.me, and if not, if it is 
if it uh, managed to call this, it seems that it is returning something in AAX, which is some function pointer that we can call. And after that, it calls exit process. I'm leaving this like this because we don't have enough information to determine what it is doing when doing the call EAX. And the other part that can happen is, this is a message that can be called or that can be shown when something cannot be uh, resolved. If we take a look to the text, we will say not found the kernel library or the kernel library is invalid. So, well, what is it showing here? So in an error message, give me a second so I can copy it. Okay, right click, group nodes. So the error message, whatever message is it showing. Okay, and here we are. We already reverse engineered all the malware sample. So we started from a binary that was obfuscated using many, well, some tricks, some basic disassembly tricks, like uh, the opaque predicates and trying to jump into the middle of proper instructions. And then we managed to decrypt it and to even reverse engineer it properly using, uh, well, <laughs> the disassembler. Now we are going to use also the pseudo calls, but you will see that it is much, much easier. So press tab or F5, do, 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 da. We don't care about that, we don't care about that. And here we are. As we can see, it is much, much simpler. I'm not going to reverse engineer that function, I'm just skipping that. And here we are, the string that is being returned by that function, and then we concat to it. Do, do, do. We know that it is a path, and it is being loaded here. And we know that the load library is returning some fun, some library. So, each lib. If it fails, we go here. Sorry, if it doesn't fail, sorry, it goes here and does whatever it does. Ba -ba -ba. Now, it takes a look to the registry key that we were taking before, a look, hk current user, then it gets uh, the value for, what is it? Value name which is path, that we can see here. Value name is just uh, this. And then after taking a look to it, it checks if the return value is, is okay. And then it takes the path, registry, path. Then it takes a look uh, it takes, it checks if there is uh, the backslash at the ends of it, and if there is not, it adds it. We can see it instead of watching and see it uh, as a decimal value by pressing R as the, the backslash, same here. And after that, we concat again. We get the new path, which is for the kernel in FNE. So we can call it H kernel kernel something. I'm going to leave it as kernel because it tries to load two different names. And then we have the H lib module. And here it is trying to do get proc address, our library, and then proc name. If we take a look to proc name, we will see that it is called get new suck. As we don't see it here, I'm going to add a comment here by pressing the insert key. Okay. Okay. And now the function get new sock gets called here, passing to it the value 1000. What it does, we cannot know with the code that we have here. Uh, we are going to remove this part because I don't like, I prefer to see better codes. So, Click on it, right click, force call type. And he no, it's not looking okay. <laughs> One second. Oh, come on. And for some reason, it's not properly working. Well, let me undo. Well, I think that we are going to leave it like that. So, 
Then after calling the function that was resolved to get new sub, we get some value with it seems to be some function pointer, the function pointer check, and then finally it calls this, which is an internal address inside this binary. But this is all we are going to do. We are not going to analyze this part for now. And then after that, it simply exits from the process. If any problem happens, it will solve the message box with this text, not from the kernel library or the kernel library is in bias. And well, <laughs> that was all. Hope you like it and that maybe it helps you tomorrow if you want to do some malware analysis or some other kinds of reverse engineering for software. Bye bye.